Good morning. It's Wednesday, November the 3rd at 11 or 10.30 a.m. I call this meeting of the Macomb County Apportionment Commission to order. Will uh, Deputy Clerk Kathy Smith please take the role of the members and just so the public knows what we're doing. It's a little bit different from the past. I was uh, reminded by Mr. Acretia that Robert's Rules of Order go alphabetically than the chairman at the end. So if you can do it that way. Ed Brule, Macomb County Democratic Party. Here. Mark Fortin, Macomb County Republican Party Chair. Here. Peter Lacita, Macomb County Prosecutor. Here. Larry Rock, Macomb County Treasurer. Here. Anthony Forlini, Macomb County Clerk. Here. Thank you. We'll move on to the adoption of the agenda. Would someone like to make a motion move to, to adopt the agenda? the agenda, Rocca? Support. Motion by Treasurer Rocca, supported by Prosecutor Lacito. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, aye. say nay. We'll move on to public participation. Members of the public may speak for three minutes on any agenda item. If you wish to speak, please come up to the podium and state your name and your address. Anybody from the public wishing to speak? Anybody? No? Okay, we'll move on to the next agenda. Approval of the minutes from the October 26, 2021 meeting. Would someone like to make a motion to move to approve, approve the, the minutes, minutes of the 2021 meeting? Raka. Support, Lucido. Motion made by Treasurer Raka, supported by Prosecutor Lucido. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any against? Thank you. Motion passes. All right, the next item on the agenda is uh, planning department's review of the amended plan. Last meeting, we uh, uh, allowed for uh, amendments to the plan uh, to be submitted by uh, Mr. Fortin, and, and we were looking also for corporate counsel's legal opinion. And if so, Mr. Schrader, I see that you're here from the planning department to present the amended plan as submitted. Good morning, commissioners. Um, just as a point of how I'll go through this, um, just to remind you that as we went and looked at these plans last time, there were four measures of analysis that we looked at, um, those being uh, the contiguousness of the individual districts being proposed, um, that no plan exceeds the 11.99% uh, variance in the distribution of the populations, um, looking at the compactness of these districts, and then also evaluating the plans on the number of community um, and voting district splits that are introduced by those plans. So with that, um, to take into consideration the Fortin plan, um, this is the amended plan that was submitted on the 1st of November 2021 per your folks deadline. Um, this plan in its entirety um, meets the qualifications of a, of, of a plan. So with that being said, uh, in going into those four categories, uh, all, all the districts are in fact contiguous within this plan. Um, the plan does meet the 11.9% standard for population <laughs> variance. Um, in terms of compactness, which I explained before, there is no prescribed measure of compactness. Um, this, uh, this plan, um, this plan has an average uh, Polsby Popper score, which is that measure of compactness of 4.77. Um, the most compact um, district proposed within this plan is district number one. Uh, the least compact um, is district number six. And then lastly, when we take a look at the um, splits that are proposed um, or introduced by this plan, um, we have a total of seven. Now, when I just to clarify with the splits, this is a this in this report, this is just a simple accounting of those splits. So if a community, if it go through the plan, if, if it splits a community, we counted that community one time. Um, there is another analysis that's going to be before you that I believe that the um, our corp council uh, representative will talk about. Uh, but within the Fortin plan, we have a total of seven splits. Um, we introduced splits in the cities of East Point, Roseville, Sterling Heights, and Warren, and then also splits in the townships of Clinton Township, Macomb Township, and Shelby Township. Uh, within the Fortin plan, there are no villages split, and in this amended plan, uh, there are no census voting districts uh, that are split. That essentially is the summary of our analysis of the plan. I'll be happy to answer any questions that the committee has. 
Are there any questions? Mr. Burley. Well, I just comment, um, and I don't know if they're going to relate to uh, what Mr. Krisha says on the issue of splits. So I'd be happy to wait until after uh, he gives his report, and then I can comment at that point. All right, let's do that. Any, any other comments? Well, why don't we have corporate counsel come up and uh, maybe uh, add to the report if there's anything? And then, you know, maybe then afterwards we can have you both answer questions as appropriate. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Frank Kreischer from uh, Corporation Council. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about, though, is I was actually myself a little confused as to the right legal authority for your standard because there's been citations to a statute, MCL 45.505, and that's the Charter Commission statute. And as some of you may be aware, the County Commission is not the Charter Commission. So there are some references to that. What I did conclude, though, is that your standard is in the actual charter itself. And that's the way it should be. The charter creates the law for the county. The charter created the apportionment commission. So your, uh, your commission is created by the charter. And the charter guides you as to how you should accomplish your goal of um, reviewing this. Now, after saying that, it's basically the same standard, okay? But I just want to explain to you. So there's a, United, a Michigan Supreme Court case saying that the difference between the standards in the Charter Commission statute and the general county statute are insignificant and they should be interpreted the same way. And that's the case Mr. Burley cited last uh, meeting. So that case also says that. But the charter standard is the county apportionment commission shall establish commission districts in the manner required by law within 60 days after the most recent final decennial. And you've already determined that'll be November 15th. That's your deadline. Here's the standard. The district shall be contiguous, compact, and as nearly square as practicable, depending on the geography of the county area involved, without regard to partisan political advantage. The district shall be drawn so that each city and township has the largest possible number of complete districts within its boundaries before any part of the city or township is joined to territory outside the boundaries of the city or township to form a district. All districts shall be single member districts and as equal in population as practicable. Townships, villages, cities, and precincts shall be divided only if necessary to meet the population standard. Now that's basically just rephrasing what was in MCL 45.505, but because that, that statute only applies to charter commissions, what our charter commission did when they drafted this charter is wisely put that in the charter so that you actually have that standard now. So that's the standard you follow. Now, you have two plans before you, and the question comes up to what What's your discretion? What, what's your power within this? And the case Mr. Burley cited was the apportionment of Wayne County Board of Commissioners from, it was a 1982 case. In that case, uh, made some, uh, the, the important holdings in that case were one, is that you're not required to adopt what's called the best plan. Because the best plan may be, people may have different views of that. And somebody may say, well, I have one less split in my plan. And the courts have said, no, that's not your duty to adopt what is, you look at the overall plan and you determine the best plan for the county. It's not determined by any one single factor. So they held that you have, the way the court put it is the, uh, a reviewing court acknowledges that the law delegates some scope for the exercise of judgment by this commission and a plan that represents a reasonable choice in the reasoned exercise of judgment must be sustained, notwithstanding that a marginally better plan might be devised. So that's the legal standard you have. So basically, you, all that's required of you is to make a reasonable choice among plans that meet the basic standards and you have that discretion. Now, to jump to the split issue, the case cited by 
uh, Commissioner Burley was followed up by a Court of Appeals case 10 years later. And if you notice, interesting, these cases are all decided in like uh, 82 and 92 because apportionment occurs in the odd year in the, like 81 and 91 and by the, the courts hear it rather quickly. So these cases are 10 years apart. The subsequent case is in Ray Clinton County, uh, Clinton County's uh, apportionment. Clinton County is a little different than our county. The whole county is smaller than one of our commissioner districts. So they have a slightly different issues, but I think there's some relevance here. And what Clinton County came down to was the splits in the cities and the townships. And they looked at that. But what Clinton County said was that you don't look at, like the, we're looking at their seven townships and uh, cities that are split. Clinton County said, what, what's more important, the number of divisions is less important than the number of pieces where, so what they look at is in the way, I asked Jeff to look at it last night when I was reading this case, is how many districts are created within a city or township. And that's the proper way of looking at it under the Clinton County case. So Jeff ran those numbers and he came up with the Burley plan is 15 and the Fortin plan is 18. So the question then becomes what of the difference in the, uh, what, what's the difference between 15 and 18? Well, in Clinton County, there was a difference between 8 and 10. Now, the commissioners approved the plan that was 8. By chance, they didn't even look at this standard. The Court of Appeals basically created this standard. But the Court of Appeals then said, even if the situation were reversed, it is not clear that such a marginal difference would exceed the legitimate scope of legislative discretion that the court must accord the apportionment commission. So in other words, the court was saying that a difference between two splits was insignificant. Uh, it, you could pick either plan, basically. They were so close. And the way this works is, if you, are more, if you follow the other standards, you're going to have more splits, basically, in my opinion, from looking at these. So if you're closer in population, you might have some more splits. And what the courts are saying is that you can look at that and pick which plan you think is the best for the county. Now, if you look at the numbers, the difference between 8 and 10, that's a 25% jump because, you know, there's two... Four times two is eight, so that's 25%. Uh, they added two to it, that's 25% jump. The jump between 15 and 18 is three. That's 20%. That's a smaller jump. So I think both plans, based on my analysis and my math, and I have to admit I'm not a math major, but I think both plans could be legally supported in court, and I think that you have the discretion to approve either plan. And that I would be, uh, I think I'd be well supported to defend either one if it was challenged. So basically, I'm not answering your question as to what plan to use, but that's not my job, that's your job. My job is to look at it and tell you where I think we stand. I think both plans before you would meet the legal standards that are applicable today. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Brule, you had a question that you wanted to... Oh, a question. <coughs> need your, uh, like the mic. To, uh, distribute. Hey, Ed, good the mic. Thank you. It's a question and comment. I'd like to distribute um, comments on the revised Fortin plan. Get, let me get that to you and get to everybody. <coughs> and the issue of splits. I think if you look at it and when you talk about not splitting a community, uh, if we accurately count them, there are 11 breaks in the Fortin plan and there are only eight breaks in uh, the Bruley plan. 
And I, I think the most egregious uh, of these breaks occurs in the city of Sterling Heights. The, S Sterling Heights can be put into two districts <coughs> within Sterling Heights and not have any community breaks whatsoever. But the way this is broken up in the proposed districts on the Fortin plan of six and seven, they're breaking it up for partisan purposes where you could contain Sterling Heights in two districts as is done in the Brule plan. Um, that also occurred 10 years ago where the numbers relate within the categories to be able to do that. I think community breaks is an important concept um, and it's one that in fact the courts will make a judgment on. Um, obviously this commission can do whatever it wants, it has five members and they can vote, but the judgment of this commission is not final. Um, it could be appealed and I think that in the past we have tried to make all of our decisions from those of us who are on past commissions uh, non-appealable. In fact, there were some appeals, but uh, the commission decision was rendered <coughs> the decision by the court. Um, I think this um, puts at jeopardy that. Uh, I think it is very clear what is going on when you have a community that doesn't need to be broken up and the community is broken up, and it's broken up on partisan basis. Um, and so I would just submit that this body should approve the plan with the less community breaks. I think that is what I heard in the phraseology that the attorney just read to us, um, and I'd be happy for him to read it again about not breaking up communities. Um, and that is the standard of the law that we should follow. And I think the Brule plan follows that standard much more adroitly uh, than this plan does. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other comments? Any comments? Is uh, it? Um... No. Uh, there was a comment made. I don't know if the uh, corporate Is council wants to restate that, if there's any misstatement being said by the member. I think Commissioner Burley was referring to the quote from the charter, uh, which is the legal standard saying that you don't break up a city or township unless necessary. The problem with, um, as both plans show, um, it is necessary in this county to break up community cities and townships. And then the question becomes, how do you do that? And I went over the standard used by the Clinton County <laughs> apportionment uh, case saying that they look at the number of districts that you put in. Now, Mr. Burley injected another issue regarding partisan. I mean, that requires a whole different level of proofs. But partisan, gerrymandering is what that refers to. And gerrymandering is usually determined by the compactness of the plan, which is the, I think you used Polsby Popper. I tend to prefer Schwartzburg, but you use Polsby Popper. So, but uh, there's two standards. Uh, and both plans are basically equal on that, with Fortin's plan being slightly better. So that would be the test I think that you, I would look at if I was looking at that, saying, well, if, if your compactness is about the same, you know, one has a closer, uh, uh, the one vote per person means that you want to be as close as possible in population. Fortin's plan is uh, basically half, uh, they're what, around five and a half percent variation, uh, whereas the other plan is close to 12. Again, as I said, as you move on one factor to be better, another factor moves too. So it's like if, if you saw when you're working with these maps, every time you move a line, it's not just one number that changes, other numbers change too. And so you have to, your job is to, what the courts basically are saying is you look at everything. You don't just look at one factor. I think that both plans meet the requirements of the factors and they're balanced differently 
and that's a legislative choice given to you to decide which plan to use. I think both plans could be supported in court, and both plans have their merits. They have, you know, their numbers are obviously different because their lines are different, but you would need more proof, I think, to show political uh, uh, proof other the, concerning the compactness issue. Thank you. Anybody else? Mr. Chairman? Yes. Mr. Ford? Uh, is it appropriate to make a motion? If you like, I'd yes. like to make a motion that we vote and approve the Fortin plan. Second, Rocco. Motion by Mark Fortin, Macomb County Republican Chair, seconded by Larry Rock, Macomb County Treasurer. Okay, uh, clerk, please take the roll. <coughs> oh, oh, I'm sorry, is there any discussion? I apologize. Yep. Um, I would like to move a substitute motion that we support the plan with the least number of community breaks. Is there support for that amendment to the roll? To the no. Fails. Any other discussion? Okay. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Brewer. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I I would just reiterate that. Um, Community breaks is an important factor, and I think Discussion. it relates on a hierarchy higher than uh, some of these other things. As you do change a line, it does make all those other factors change. Um, the Bruley plan is within the prescribed um, framework of the Supreme Court decisions, and I think that um, it is the better plan, so thank you. Thank you. Mr. Lucido? Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, I, I appreciate the dialogue and the discussion gives everybody an opportunity to voice their concerns as well as uh, explore options and alternatives and um, sometimes even thoughts from the public, which I would, I would encourage and support the public's input because it seems like we sit here as a body but we don't have that authority to do anything other than to listen to our constituents or those people that we represent. Sometimes politics gets in the way of the parties and the parties get in the way of politics. So I would almost uh, like to support a plan of the people that make me feel at ease because I see that there's dissension even among our group here. I appreciate that, Mr. Chairman, giving me the time. Thank you, is there any other comments? Hearing none, with the deputy clerk, please take the roll. Ed Burley, Macomb County Democratic Party Chair. Uh, no. Mark Fortin, Macomb County Republican Party Chair. Yes. Peter Lacito, Macomb County Prosecutor. No. Larry Rocka, Macomb County Treasurer. Yes. Anthony Forlini, Macomb County Clerk. No. All right. That being said, we we do not have a plan forward just yet. Is there? conversation about having a potential uh, opening it to the public at this point or opening it to maybe the board members if they want to submit something an alternative mr. chairman I would hope that again the statements that I echoed earlier would be heard and I would support a motion at this time and I would bring this motion before this body to have a plan submitted by the public if we can't come up with one but alternatively incorporate in the motion that the members of this committee shall have that right to bring another plan. And therefore, as such, I would open it up to members of the public to bring forth their plan, as well as any of the members here that have not submitted a plan. Uh, let me just, before we move forward with that, I, I'm not even sure that we're allowed to allow the public to submit a plan until the 15th of November is that correct or I, I just want to make sure there's not a motion that violates that or should they go through board members here to submit a plan yeah I think um, the statutory deadline just gives a guarantee that it's open to the public if you want to but it just opening it to the public poses other problems for example we could have 30 plans for Jeff to review so if you want um, you should have, first of all, a deadline and some way of limiting or so that we don't get uh, 
so that there's some type of way to have a meaningful review. So you could have members of the, if it goes through a member of the commission, then that obviously would be a type of review. So if a commissioner says, I saw this plan from the public and that's the one I want to go with, that would be an option. So. And that would be through the 15th and then after that it would be open to the public? It's open to the public. So but what you're I, saying I is, is if anybody from the public wanted to submit it, they can submit it through uh, a willing person here. And then the, that the person commission. could submit, a commissioner would submit it to Jeff. And that would limit, uh, put some type of review process on it so that Jeff only sees uh, he's not overburdened with. Uh, so that would be an option here. And I would uh, consider a deadline and a second, uh, obviously, another meeting because the times are coming up and you do need to adopt the plan. I understand. Um, so we're still, I, I guess, let me just, before we move forward, um, Mr. Lucido is making some form of a motion, but it was kind of trailing around. I want to make sure we, we're very succinct. Mr. Chairman, it, it, with uh, council's indulgence of the um, 15th and bringing it through a member of the committee, I would then amend my motion to indicate that members of the committee can accept plans that would be sought out or brought through members of the committee for the public to give and then that plan would be given to Jeff to review and that would be done before the 15th of November and we would be looking at this those plans if we can agree to a plan then great if not then as councils indicated the 15th opens up after the 15th of the public is that correct I want to make sure point I point of order, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, point of order. Go ahead, Mr. There is no motion on the floor at this time. Then I, I made a motion, but it wasn't clarified because it was. There's taken. no motion on the floor at this time, Mr. Chairman. I'd move for a motion then, Mr. Chairman. Do, do we have a date specific? Because the 15th would be beyond that, so it would have to be before that date if that's what you're looking to do. I'm looking to do exactly that. Taking it by the 10th would be a week from today and bringing it, uh, taking plans by the 10th for submission to this board for approval of the same, if so approved by the members of this committee. Okay. Yeah, and a motion? Just, with the understanding that the commissioner wouldn't be obligated to submit all <coughs> plans they receive, just the plans that, you know, of course. it's the, still the commission's obligation to present the plan. So they would present the plan to Jeff that they feel are, uh, that they would like to have reviewed. So, yes, that would be the motion then. Only those plans in which the commission would allow as it relates to the individual commissioner submitting the plan. I'm not gonna, if I was dutied with five and I felt one was appropriate, I could submit the same. We have a motion by Mr. Lucido. Is there a second? I'll second that, move it along so we can have discussion. Thank you. Um, I just wanna clarify some points. Um, If someone from the public wanted to have submitted a plan, they could have already gone to a commission member and that commission member already had the opportunity to submit one or two or three plans. So that opportunity has already existed from the beginning. I think the other issue is opening ourselves up as gatekeepers for someone comes up to you, says that they want to submit this plan and you don't really think it's appropriate, then you become the final judge as opposed to some independent process where everyone gets handled appropriately. I think that can lead to some kind of problem. My understanding is that if we as a group don't come up with a plan by the 15th, then the public has the right to submit to this body any plan and we have the responsibility to have either the planning department look at all of them or none of them 
and they would just come to us for a final determination. So I think you're creating a process that already exists, but we're not creating the rules and the procedure in a clear fashion to do it. If, if we can't come up with the five of us and, and have a majority agree to a plan, then the 15th, the, by law, the public already has the right to do that. So I, I find the measure kind of confusing. Um, so if are I, we making comments on the motion? Oh, yes, there's comments on the motion. I agree. I agree. The process is there already. And we are opening a can of worms. And Mr. Chairman, if I may, it, Mr. Lucido. I can restate the motion to indicate that any member can be bringing plans, albeit one or all, as Mr. Brilley has indicated, by the 15th or by the 10th. Uh, that would give seven days for submission to Jeff. So if it's a hundred plans or one plan, whatever it is, it is, because the process is already in place to be looked at then before a, a properly uh, convened commission after the 10th. So uh, what I'm hearing is we still have until the 15th as a board mm -hmm. to submit something. Mm -hmm. We haven't come up with a solution yet. So we're giving everyone an opportunity to bring something forward. If they happen to see something from the outside brought in that maybe somebody didn't submit it because the submission, they didn't know they could go through us. They, maybe they just felt like it was up to just us, possibly. So this allows any one of us to present a plan and for us to review it before the 15th. That's the way I've seen yeah. this. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Rocca. Uh, yeah, I would just like to comment on what you guys are talking about. We have two plans before us that were both fine with Jeff Schroeder, both fine with Frank Cresha. We have an obligation to vote on either one of them because they're both appropriate. So now you want to, as Mr. Bruley had indicated, create a can of worms. That's what you're doing right now. So proceed, but you have a motion on the floor. It's been seconded by uh, Mr. Fellini. And if you want to take the vote, I'd be happy to. to Mr. Chairman, before. Do. You still have discussion. Go ahead. Thank you. I appreciate that. And I think it's, it's worthy of the discussion. We've had two plans that have already been offered. Both plans have been shot down. We have no other options or alternatives right now but to a submission of a, another way of getting another plan. Therefore, this board or commission is charged with having a duty to do something before the 15th. Otherwise, it's open to the public. I'm asking, as Mr. Brilley has indicated, and I appreciate that dialogue, that Mr. Brilley indicated, look, the plan or the, the, the rules are already in place. Since both plans have been shot down, we still have an opportunity of submission of other plans. Mr. Brilley? Yeah, just what concerns me is the degree of responsibility. Any of us can come up with a plan and submit it. We can set a deadline for those submissions to be considered. I, I get that. But I don't want to see the commission members have the responsibility of passing through any particular plan given to them. Because if someone comes up to you on the street and said, here's my plan, please submit it, there is an implied responsibility that therefore I must, even if I disagree with that, <coughs> give it for fairness sake to the clerk's office. And, yep. and I find we can wait to set a date for the 10th and submit other plans if anyone wants to come up with it and see where we go from there. But I don't want to see us take on the responsibility of being the clocking agent that the I, clerk's office by four o'clock on a certain day has. Um, so, uh, Mr. Brown, that I, I think is is dubious. I, I I tend to agree. It made me a bit nervous when he says he wants to turn in a hundred plans. Though, wait a minute, <laughs> I'm thinking to myself, that's not the the purpose here. If you want to sponsor a plan, sponsor a plan. Don't sponsor ten. I you know. Well, but you can't limit it unless we do it by formal action, and that's part of the rules that aren't encompassed so far. So far, any of us could turn in as many as we wanted. 
uh, to the clerk's office, we should set a time and a date for submission and then see what happens. And then if we don't come up with any decision by the 15th, then the public has the right. right. It's not ours to say they do or don't. They already have it to be able to submit it. And we can only set up a procedure by which they can submit it. Thank, thank you, Mr. Brilli. Uh, Mr. Lucido. To Mr. Brilli's point, I believe council, we already have a protocol in place for submission of plans. I would like to continue that same protocol. As Mr. Brilli indicated, maybe there is an agency, maybe there is a duty if somebody on the street gave me a plan. Therefore, we have submitted them as we have in the past. We can keep that line going where they have a right to go give the plan to, you know, the clerk's office or through <coughs> another, the same well, way we've been doing these. How did you submit your plan, Mr. Brulee? Maybe that's Well, it's, it's amongst the board members here. Question. So the so board I, members here, let me just, yeah, let me just clarify how it was done. On people that have got their hands up. Okay, so I just want to clarify that we promoted it through the yep. board members. The, the plans were promoted through us. Any one of us can. Two were submitted through us. And so the, I guess the question is, he's opening up to board members submitting another plan. That's the way I understood the motion. Mr. Fortin? Uh, I've ba I have basically a question and comment. I agree with Mr. Brule. Um I think it's just adding, we have two absolutely legitimate plans. And I have a question. Um, I think Mr. Lacido just said something like they were shot down. Mr. Brulee's wasn't shot down. So my question is this. If we do this system and create Lord knows how many more plans, is the Brulee and Fortin plan officially out and cannot be compared to the others? Point of clarification, Mr. I, Chair. I, let me just say, I don't believe it is. We're, uh, any plan can be approved before the 15th. I, I, well, I they would the have to be been, resubmitted, wouldn't they? The once it's been, I, I just, let me ask Mr. Krisha, the once we voted down a plan, does that mean that vote, that plan is not able to come forward again? My opinion, and, and there are rules regarding rehearings and that, my opinion is this board can approve any plan that meets the legal requirements that it finds is the best plan or the, an appropriate plan uh, using what they was a reasoned discretion or reasoned uh, and so and I if you come back after reviewing all these plans and think that one of them that you voted against or didn't second the motion on is the the best or the plan that you think is proper for the county and it meets all of the legal requirements you can adopt it so and it's, it's that's your just that's actually your job your primary <clears throat> job here is to do that you you have to adopt a plan and you have to adopt it within a reasonable time and all this november 15th is just who can submit the plan right now until the 15th it has to be submitted by somebody from this this board so the motion is basically to allow board members to resubmit or redo or whatever the case might be and bring something forward again well, you had previous motions setting deadlines, so those deadlines have passed, and you need to reopen it up, obviously, right. because right. you don't have a plan. So a motion to reopen it up is appropriate in perhaps setting another deadline so that Jeff has some time to review it before the 15th. And I think that's been established in the motion yes. of the 10th. If, if that's a will, I would move a motion or motion amend the motion to suggest that any board member may submit a plan by November 10th at 4 o'clock. I, I believe that's what the motion was. Did I miss that? If, if it was, then, then that was not my understanding of it. But I think we need a date and a time. And my motion would not infer that any of the board members have responsibility for accepting any plan submitted to them by a member of the public. I, I think that's fair. So that's a, a, are you doing that in the form of a motion or, or amendment or are you just cl me, clarifying I, it? I can do it as a motion. I can do it as an amendment yes. to the motion on the floor. Either way Mr. you wish. Mr. Chairman, I'll, I'll revise the motion then pursuant to the discussions that we've had. If I may, 
that we will go ahead and reopen it up with the deadlines then that we had, those would be moot because now those deadlines have passed. We would go forward uh -huh. and submit plans. Whoever wants to submit a plan as board member by November 10th, Wednesday, 2021 at four, no later than four o'clock p.m. for purposes of having Jeff review the same and bringing it back to the board. Before the 15th? Yes. I'll, I'll amend my motion. Okay, you're seconding that? Yeah, I'll amend my motion to second that, yes. Thank Any you. Discussion? Go ahead, Mr. Burley. Um, the 11th is a holiday, my understanding. Is that, is the county opener closed on the 11th? It's closed. So that's on a Thursday? Yes. So then you have Friday, and then you have when is the 15th? What day of the? It's Monday. Monday. So they have one day to review all the plans, and we have to decide something by the 15th, okay? Just so we get a time frame on this. If for purposes, if, if, if Jeff, I mean, we don't know how many plans there's going to be. Right, exactly. So if we want to back it up to the 9th, which would be <clears throat> Tuesday, well, I'm just, I'm just want to flag I mean, the holiday, I want flag to, the weekend, and get the timing right so whatever we, is appropriate. Okay, then I'll, I'll modify the motion, which indicates. Can't you get something right? Well, the problem is. There is a problem. The motion is to go ahead and reopen it up and submit plans by no later than November 10th. Strike that. November 9th, which is Tuesday, by 4 o'clock p.m. I'll amend the motion. My we'll motion to that. second it. Thank you. Any other discussion? <clears throat> Hearing none, would the deputy clerk please take the roll? Ed Burley, Macomb County Democratic Party Chair. Yes. Mark Fortin, Macomb County Republican Party Chair. No. Peter Lacido, Macomb County Prosecutor? Yes. Larry Rocca, Macomb County Treasurer? No. Anthony Forlini, Macomb County Clerk? Yes. All right, so we have until the 10th, sir. Oh, the 9th, I'm sorry, I apologize. Thank you, Mr. Um, next item on the agenda is unfinished business. Is there any unfinished business? Hearing none, the next item on the agenda is new business. Is there any new business? Uh, move for public participation. Members of the public may speak for three minutes. If you wish to speak, please come forward to the podium and state your name and address. Good morning. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to address you today. My name is Susan Heyer. I live at 61652 Glenwood Trail in Washington, and I have lived at that address for over 30 years. Um, I am here today asking for fair and equitable, and I believe that's what Mr. Lucido's purpose is also here today. In 2017, I walked to collect signatures that resulted in the 2018 gerrymandering measure being placed on the ballot for a vote. This measure won overwhelming support from voters who amended our state constitution to create an independent commission to draw new maps that are more representative of the people in our communities. I am well aware this vote of the people is not directly connected to the work of this apportionment commission, but the message is. Voters in Michigan are tired of the manipulation of congressional districts and that same message applies to the manipulation of voting precincts. Voters want equity and fairness for all. Both Chairman Fortin and Bruley each submitted a map for redrawing the 13 commission districts. Both maps met the four standards as required by law. On October 26, this commission, in a partisan effort, voted to allow County Republican Chairman Fortin to fix and gerrymander the map he submitted for redrawing the 13 commission districts. The public chair was given an opportunity to redraw his map, 
I didn't see where the same opportunity was offered to the Democratic chair. In the, pri the prior pri Republican map shows the splitting of 35 voting precincts. Has that changed? The Democratic map showed no splitting of voting precincts. Was the Bruley plan considered when it was not even seconded here today? Thank you, Mr. Lucido, for at least recognizing that all voters have a voice. I'm asking you again to please not ignore the, me the 2018 message of voters in our state and in this county. I am again asking for fair and equitable. Please give Mr. Bruley's plan an opportunity. Thank you very much for your time today. Is there anybody else from the public? Hi, um, thank you for this opportunity to speak here today. Um, my name is Linda Cook. I live in Warren. I've lived in Warren for 42 years. Um, and I was also very active in getting signatures for the petition to get Proposal 2 on the ballot in 2017. I felt fair, ma fair maps needed to be drawn up that would represent the will of the Michigan voters. I learned a lot about gerrymandering when I became involved with this drive and learned how gerrymandering can, can and does affect voter results. Now I'm seeing somewhat of the same problem with the state of Michigan, that the state of Michigan had with gerrymandering coming into play with the new district lines that are being drawn up here in Macomb County. I see a serious problem with the way the Republican map is drawn because it does not fairly represent all voters in Macomb County. Uh, it appears that the Fortin plan is distorting the real number of community breaks, thus giving political advantage to some of the proposed districts. This is not necessary since it is obvious that lines can be drawn that would be fair and still stay true to Michigan legal um, requirements. So I'm asking you to do what is right and select the map that gets closer to zero political bias here in Macomb County. I am a constituent here in Macomb County and I am perfectly satisfied with the Burley plan because it does meet all the criteria for um, and fairness. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else from the public? Good morning and thank you for allowing me the opportunity to speak. My name is Michelle Wilson Merriweather and I live at 52860 Muirfield Drive, Chesterfield, Michigan. And I'm pleased to say I'm a commissioner in Chesterfield and also a vice chair of the Macomb County Democratic Party. I wanted to speak today to you in regard to the situation <clears throat> of what is happening with the redistricting. I just wanted to state that without a doubt, in my opinion, as I've had a chance to really take a look at what is happening, the clear gerrymandering that is happening and how districts are being divided unfairly and without the proper standards in place. I like to state my full support for the Bruley plan. I do believe it needs to be further considered. I did not hear the Bruley plan get the proper support I feel that it needed from the members of the board and have the proper discussion that needs to be in place to really dig down deep to understand what is taking place because clearly Bruley's plan does have the voice of the people going back to the year 2018. So I would just like to state to the members of the board, as you're taking consideration, please give clear consideration to the Bruley plan. If you don't understand it, perhaps, ask him. He's a smart man. He can explain it to you. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you. Is there anybody else from the public looking to speak? Good day to all. My name is Cindy Doyle. And I'm at 53246 Mark Drive, Shelby Township, Michigan. And I have been a resident here for over 30 years. I have taught special education in Macomb County for over 39 years, but I am now retired. In those 39 years, I have fought for the fairness and rights of all children in this county. 
I expect the same fairness and equity for every human being that resides here in the drawing up of the reapportionment of the Macomb County map in 2021. Keeping fairness and equity in mind, Sterling Heights has the population to control two complete districts without breaking any community boundary. Again, keeping fairness and equity in mind. The same is true as well for Clinton and Macomb Townships as East Point too. Make this fair, make this equitable, do not gerrymander. We choose fairness over control. We choose fairness over subverting the will of the people. We choose what is right, equitable, and fair on both sides. We choose the Bruley Plan. I hope that you will consider our input. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Is there any other public input? Good morning. My name is Carol Chi. I live at 35325 Moravian in Sterling Heights, and I've lived there for 40 years. I'm also a retired public school teacher. About 11 years ago, I retired from teaching. And I just want to put in my two cents that I agree with the four women that spoke before me. I support equity and fairness uh, because that's how I was brought up and that's what I believe in. And uh, that was also, an, as an educator, I felt the same way. Um, you have to res we have to respect all the voters in Macomb County, uh, not just one party or the other, but we should go for partisan fairness in every, br in every uh, map that you draw. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Is anybody else from the public would like to speak? Oh, I guess it's my turn. <laughs> Good morning, um, Chair and board members. I'm Jasmine Early from Sterling Heights. It is interesting for me that they speak about fairness and equity, the democratic side. And uh, for all, when me as a minority had not lived that in this country in my 21 years that I had been here by what had been happening, I do support 100% as a community leader in a Sterling Heights and in Macomb County, the map that Mr. Fortum provided. I had worked at Sterling Heights for four elections for five seats, <laughs> I lost count. Um, I'm appalled to see the son of you do not side with him. Mr. Jeff said both maps were fine. You just needed to choose one of them. If both of them are fine and you are open the can of worm, Mr. Lucido, to the rest of the people, um, you say one map, well, as a community leader, I will be submitting one. And, but you had the options here to make this, this is the problem that we had in this country. You keep delaying and delaying. This meeting where nobody can come, only those who are called. Equity and fairness is applied to all. And it was showing those two maps for two different par parties. You could have made the decision today, but you delayed it. Delaying it more to cause more trouble. Political bias is what I have seen from both sides, and the voters are tired. We just had an election yesterday, and we are tired physically and emotionally. As a minority leader, because Hispanic people in Sterling Heights are a minority, I support 100% that map. We need more equity and fairness for the people that come from other countries, immigrants. Sterling Heights is a high population of immigrant people. And what is drawn here is gonna bring equity and fairness to the people. So why your side who cl claims to be tolerant and <laughs> talk about equity just when it only applies to you, but when we, the minority, are asking, yeah, let's do it, let's go with that map and let's see how it works for as the immigrant legal people that are in this country fighting to protect this country, how will that go? You didn't have any reason, any, any reason that was not political to say no to this map, Mr. Lucido, Mr. Forlini. 
I expect that from Mr. Burley. Burley, thank you for your comments, but not from you too, because Mr. Fortum presented a great map. Thank you. Um, thank you, and you will see me again. Thank you. Appreciate it. Any other public comments? Any other public comments? Hearing none, will the last item on the agenda is adjournment. Would someone like to make a motion to adjourn Move the meeting? Move to adjourn, Raka. Support. Motion by Treasurer Raka, supported by Prosecutor Lucido. All in favor to uh, uh, to adjourn, signify by saying aye. 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 Any against? Thank you. We're adjourned. It is uh, eleven twenty-five. Next meeting. Next meeting. Uh, we'll